Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and welcome to the all-new GMC Canyon Denali. This is a gorgeous mid-sized truck that I am sort of falling in love with. So the Denali is almost the top of the line. There's four trim levels. You start with the Elevation, which is the only trim level that comes standard in two-wheel drive. It'll just drive those rears. And then the AT4 Denali and AT4X are all standard four-wheel drive trucks. Now, this mid-sized truck is pretty potent, but now it only boasts a four-cylinder 2.7-liter turbo, but it makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. So, here's the thing. They don't make this in a diesel anymore. You used to be able to get either a V6 petrol engine or a diesel engine, and there is no diesel option, but this 2.7 liter turbo sort of splits the difference because it is all about incredible low-end torque. And it even sounds like a diesel sometimes with the windows down. You get that turbo whistle noise. Anyway, this is incredibly capable and I really love the Denali trim because despite the fact that this is not a cheap truck, it's just over $50,000, but for a midsize, it's pretty darn big. A Silverado, I've lived with it, it's too big for me. I don't need the Silverado and I get frustrated when I'm trying to park it in normal spaces. Whereas this, it's still got a lift. I have 10.7 inches of ground clearance, unless we probably count destroying this step, which we might do in certain situations off-road. You can only get this truck in the quad cab with the short bed. It would be cool if you get a, could get a two-door and make a super long bed out of it, but not the case. So in the rear, reasonable space. It's not luxurious, but it's not cramped. You can make do back here. And if you did have to put some people back here, they're not terribly uncomfortable seats. And because this is the Denali version, you get a lot of lovely standard leather and wood features. It looks premium, it feels premium, and the best part is it doesn't just feel like they've tacked on a bunch of leather and wood to a Colorado. So you do get a feeling like this is a special and luxurious place to be. In the rear, you do get some HVAC stuff. This is this is nice because in a lot of cars, like I'm looking at you, Honda, in a Civic, you don't even get vents for the rear passengers, and you get a USB-C and a regular USB charge port here. And they didn't cheap out on the rear doors because you still get the quilted leather and the deviated stitching. They could have just made this like a really bland door and said, hey, we're only giving the front door all the fancy stuff. You don't get the wood trim in the rear, but you probably don't want your kids destroying that anyway. So armrest, cup holders, and the cutest darn headrest you have ever seen. This is adorable. We can flip these guys down for better visibility and you do get your little slidey thing here, not electric, that is manual. I appreciate what they're going for here, which I assume is for rust prevention, but look at all the drips on this frame. So this is kind of interesting. It would be nice if that was cleaned up a little better, but hey, I would rather have that than rust. Capless filler, very convenient. And then in the back, we're pretty familiar with everything back here. It's not extravagant, but you do get a couple nice features. You get an outlet here for some power tools. And right here, we are able to store with our little waterproof cubby hole. This guy, I guess maybe not that waterproof. <laughs> there is some water, but there is a gasket along here that definitely helps prevent this from getting too, too wet. So whatever's in there is probably gonna be all right. It has been pouring rain for the last few days. So that's the ultimate test. If that's all the water that get in there, I guess it's not that bad. And it has the ruler across this tailgate, which I, you know, to me, I'm like, okay, that's cute. But a lot of people have mentioned they really appreciated that. The Denali gets the fancy wheels. We've got a 275 section tire on a 20 inch wheel, fairly rugged and getting the job done. Six lugs per wheel. So you know it can tow and handle some payload. It can tow 7,700 pounds, which for a midsize truck, pretty darn good and probably gonna get the job done for most if towing is not the main function of your vehicle. If you're just doing it once in a while. Let's get under the hood. 
And there she is, our L3B. This is what we've got in the Colorado and the Canyon. I do genuinely like the character of this engine, but in the Canyon version, they are all high output. So if you get a Colorado, you can upgrade to the high output version, giving you that 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. But in the Canyon, the GMC versions are all the high output. What I like is it's just not, there's no frills in here. They didn't like emblazon GMC and some fancy letters across the top. No, it's just, it, you got your little foam insulator here to reduce injector noise and you've got some foam here to help keep that nice and quiet while you're idling in your driveway or at a stoplight. The Denali gives you all of the cameras. You got a camera in the front, camera in the rear, cameras on the mirrors and cameras under the truck for off-roading which is actually super helpful. So let's jump in, start this up and take it for a ride because I want to show you what it's been like living with this Denali because I've put over 200 miles on it so far this week and I am just loving it. I'm sorry for all this road noise. I am genuinely in the middle of nowhere. I really thought I was like, oh, I'm going to find a quaint little spot. All right, push to start. And you can hear my phone vibrating because I have my wireless charging set up. We've got CarPlay, we love to see that. We've got my favorite podcast, How Did This Get Made, playing right now. But what's really nice about this Denali is that it has the Google features. So if I wanna go and navigate somewhere, I have all of this. But even better than that, I get Google Maps on my dashboard in that main screen. This is so incredibly helpful. I don't have to take my eyes off of the road or off of what's straight in front of me to go and fiddle with this. It actually puts it right in front of me, which I just love. You've got a few different screens here to play with and you can get all of your funky off-road stuff going on. It'll tell you the steering angle, what you're doing with your transfer case. I've got oil pressure and it'll tell me the pitch and roll of the vehicle so we don't get caught up and roll the darn thing, which I think would be pretty difficult actually. You can simplify and just have a black screen with your speed, or you can go ahead and get your, uh, sorry, I went too far, your tachometer with the trip odometer and you know, that whole deal. So that's great. I genuinely love the way they've set this up. Something that's a little bit interesting or frustrating for me is that none of the trip odometers or anything on that main screen are controlled by any buttons on the wheel or around the wheel. It's all through this touch screen. So you do have to kind of go and look through these to figure out where things are. That can be a little tricky, but once you're used to it, it's not a big deal. But the only thing that everybody called out when this car was launched is if you look over here, there is no headlight switch at all. In fact, your headlights are controlled up here. So you hit this button and you either have off, auto, parking, oops, see, that's frustrating. I wish it would stay up, uh, parking light or your headlights. Now, that is especially frustrating for me because I am one of those people who when I see someone at night with no headlights, I flip my headlights on and off in an attempt to show this person uh, what they're missing in terms of headlights. It, it almost never works because these people are already um, a few brain cells short of figuring out how anything works. Oh yes, and I'll get my cooled seats going. This is lovely. But in this case, you can't kind of like flip headlights on and off all that quickly it's a little frustrating but you know what in this day and age just leave your headlights in auto it will do the job for you and hopefully you won't be driving around in the dark rainy weather with no lights on so into drive with a lovely center shifter no silly scrolly wheel or buttons just a normal shifter and oh, the first thing you do is grip this phenomenal leather steering wheel and then we've got our awesome camera very high quality stuff here and you can see all kinds of different views which i really love about this truck
So you may scoff at the fact that this is a four cylinder now, but it's quick, it has juice. This thing gets out of the hole really quickly and it only revs to like 5,500 RPM. It behaves more like a diesel than you would expect. So it gives you all of that low down torque, but you don't have to fight it to, to, to keep it in, a, in some crazy high power band like maybe the gasoline engines were. So you're always in that torque and that's the thing, you ride the torque in this vehicle. Brakes, incredibly natural. This is the thing about this truck is that it's really easy to adapt to. It's a relaxing experience and I'm never worried like, oh, am I gonna fit down this road? Is this too big? But I am worried that this Lexus is going like 10 miles an hour and I would really like to get around this trash truck. These seats are luxurious and comfortable. In fact, I had the ultimate comparison the other day. I drove a Ferrari GTC4 Lusso home from New Hampshire, about a two hundred or a two and a half hour drive. And then I got into this and I was so relieved to get into my Denali. <laughs> From that Ferrari, I can't explain to you. The butt in this seat is so soft and nice. I love having the cooled seat function here, especially in the summer after going for a run. And they're supportive. This is a genuinely comfortable seat. But something that's interesting, because I've got all the off-road capability, when every, every time I see a gate open like that, I'm so tempted to go for a drive. I don't really know what the legal ramifications of that kind of stuff is. So I'm not doing it, and I'm certainly not doing it in a press car where I'm probably gonna get the thing impounded. Uh, yeah, not a good look. But hey, big Altima energy, baby! Of course you're gonna cut me off, that's your style. But again, I don't get like road ragey in this because it's a relaxing drive. It's not vague, it's tuned in and dialed in. I love this truck, and that's not me. I'm not a truck guy. I just find myself really at home in it. The ride quality, it's smooth, especially for something that's this off-road capable. It feels incredibly luxurious. Like I would comfortably and confidently daily drive this. This is actually been a really nice thing to have in my driveway for the week and I've looked forward to getting in it pretty much every time. It's got an eight speed automatic transmission. It shifts fairly smoothly and you know, you floor it pretty quick to get that downshift. We're certainly not talking about like a PDK or anything in that realm, but it does the job. It gets you where you need to be quickly. I wanna show you the turbo whistle of this thing. So first, let's put the windows down. My favorite button in this truck is right here. All windows down at once. It does not go up though. There's only a down functionality, which I assume is to protect your kids' little fingies if you just decided to throw them all up, or maybe your poor, precious dog. But let's get under load here and listen to this. Hear that turbo whistle? That's pretty great. It definitely feels exciting. So maybe you're not getting a big V8 feel or I guess, I don't know, people miss their V6s in these trucks as well. You still get some character from the sound. Let's see what this turning radius is like. Good enough, maybe. Yeah, not knocking down the sign. That's good. That's good driving, boys. The steering feel is so refreshing in this vehicle because it's it's luxurious, it's light, but it's not vague. I'm not just kind of like hoping that I'm pointing in the right direction. I can feel what's going on. That's not always the case with trucks. Not necessarily in the midsize realm, but in the larger trucks, sometimes, you know, you get into like a super duty or a heavy duty truck and it's like, you've really got to be steering fast around a tight corner, things like that. Whereas this just feels so natural. Anybody who can drive can comfortably get into this Canyon and drive it well. Not to mention the fact that it's narrow enough that I can put it between the lines. I can stay between the mustard and the mayo without thinking like, ooh, am I too close to that? Am I gonna take somebody's mirror off? No, 
this is the jam. This is the size of truck that I would be buying because I don't tow that much. I could probably put my Civic Type R in a trailer and get it to a racetrack with this. That'd be great. If you're towing like super distances, obviously you just wouldn't be looking at something like this. You'd be looking at something that can tow 20 or 30,000 pounds. New England roads are awful. We have so many nightmarish potholes and ruts and all kinds of junk and it's just a pain. I have no care in the world in my Denali. Despite having the fancy 20 inch wheels, I still have plenty of sidewall. I'm not gonna bend a wheel. I've got everything I could ask for in terms of capability for an on-road truck, but it still has an insane approach and departure angle. I could still get around and over a lot of terrain off-road. I could still hang out with my buds if they're like, you know, Jeep people or whatever in this and be just fine. I've got my four-wheel drive modes. I can lock it up. We're good to go. Now, unfortunately, I can't just play music to show you what this sounds like for a couple reasons. Number one, copyright would, uh, you know, demonetize my channel. But the other thing is that it's difficult to really get a feel for how a sound system sounds over your speakers because your speakers are going to be the limiting factor. It is phenomenal. This Bose system is great and I would love to live with this Bose system. It's like if you've heard the ELS 3D Studio in the Acuras, it, it starts to rival that. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I do genuinely enjoy listening to music on this system. So that's one thing that I do appreciate is the fact that you can get into this pickup truck. It's not too frilly, but it's luxurious enough and it has a phenomenal sound system that makes you wanna stay in it. I just like driving this truck. gonna jump the tracks and we're not gonna jump the tracks but it just doesn't matter you could do anything in this truck for fuel economy I've averaged 20 and a half miles per gallon over the past 231 miles on the highway I'm able to eke out a little closer to 22 so if you do have a lot of highway commuting this isn't terrible however I have heard that the v6 did manage to eke out a little better fuel economy performance, but I suppose it's all situational and the fact that I don't have to wring this out very hard to get torque out of it. I can just kind of lean into it and we're off, which, you know, maybe that's the trade-off. Maybe, maybe we take away that diesel, we take away a V6 and we give ourselves a robust torque filled turbo, cylinder, turbo four cylinder with gas. Let's get this thing out onto a highway because surprisingly, this is where this truck starts to shine for me. Of course, it has all the off-road capabilities that you would ever need, but if you're buying a mid-sized pickup truck, chances are this is your daily driver and you're gonna need it for this kind of activity. So, let's get out there. Great visibility. I love being able to comfortably get onto a freeway and change lanes without the fear of bumping into somebody. I mean, obviously that would be a bad day, but you know, sometimes you don't get all the visibility you need, but in a pickup truck, you've got glass everywhere. It's wonderful. And then I've got these nice cruise control controls down here. I, I, I can adjust my uh, distance from the car in front of me with the gap adjust here. The one complaint that I have about this controller is that it only goes one direction. I can only pull this down, it does not go up. So I have to just scroll through the whole list of three settings before I can adjust. Um, let's get out here past this slow night's limousine van who usually end up hogging the left lanes. But you notice like I didn't need any wild downshift for that pass. It's got all this juicy low end torque. All it needs is for that turbo to spool up. It's 
pretty quiet. It's well insulated. And the steering and all the controls feel really natural. I don't feel darty. I don't feel lost. I don't feel like I'm getting behind the vehicle at all. And for a, a, a truck, I mean, not like an SUV, but a truck, a proper truck, that's really important. You want to feel secure and safe. And sometimes it's hard to find that compromise between having great off-road capability, being a proper body on frame truck, and also being a comfortable cruiser on the highway. Look at this, we're doing 80, I need to slow down. There's usually cops up here and I'm not even noticing it because this is just such a relaxed experience. So let's wrap this up. I think that this Canyon Denali is one of the best all around mid-sized truck packages out there. I enjoy driving it, it has its faults. I don't like the way those rear door closes. That might be indicative of some sort of build quality things. I don't like that there's like dripping undercoating on the frame, but hey, it's probably rust resistant. So who am I to complain? I'd rather have drips than rust. But the driving experience, man, is so good. This is a really nice place to be. I it, and it looks the part. It doesn't look like a cheapy mid-sized truck that they've slapped some wooden leather in. It actually has a presence all its own and makes it feel like it earned that Denali nameplate on the vehicle. I'm not a truck guy, but if I were to buy a truck, I want it to drive like this. I think it's nice. I like the sound system. I want to exist in this vehicle and I like taking it to go running. I like driving it to work. I have just genuinely enjoyed my time in this to a point where I, in, in the rare case, I'm gonna miss a press car. Like I genuinely like this thing. So I hope this helps at least inspire you to check it out or reinforce your purchase if you already bought one. Uh, but yeah, the GMC Canyon Denali should not be overlooked and this trim level is the jam for me. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one.